time for The Verdict. Hello, I'm Kent Meyer. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is sponsored in part by the Able Law Firm. It's time for The Verdict. And welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and I am joined, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. And Kent, today we continue our series on Oklahoma's impact players. Yes, uh, this is a combination show. We want to uh, visit today with Carl Stover, who's the president, chairman, and chief executive officer of C.H. Guernsey and Company, uh, headquartered in Oklahoma City. But we also want to focus not simply on Carl, but on the work that this uh, uh, well-kept secret uh, Oklahoma City has and Tulsa has in the in the form of C.H. Guernsey and Company, a firm that does amazing work, does it all over the world for concerns that I think uh, will uh, surprise our viewers, and uh, they're located right here in our state and indeed are making an impact certainly locally but uh, nationally and internationally as well. Very interesting history to the company, an interesting structure to the way that they are uh, corporately uh, designed. Uh, they disprove the adage that you can't be all things to all people. <laughs> they are uh, have a wealth of diversity, as mm -hmm. they like to phrase it, and as they prove it on a daily basis. And uh, they do a lot of things, and I am personally familiar with much of what they do, and what they do, uh, uh, they do very well. well. We will visit with Carl Stover when we return. He's the president and CEO of C.H. Guernsey and Company, an architectural and engineering firm located right here in Oklahoma. It's next on The Verdict. continue to rage out of control, bringing a disastrous end to one of the driest summers on record. Anchor zero 05. When property is at risk and lives are at stake, we get moving. We're the Air Force Reserve. Our mission? An aerial assault on Mother Nature's most daunting adversary. Copy, look. Anchor zero 05. I need to drop on this location. Ready, ready, drop. We're there working to save our forests, to save our communities, and to save lives. Good job, zero 05. Thank you very much for the good work. Air Force Reserve aerial firefighting may be a part-time job, but it's a full-time experience. And just one of many exciting careers in the Air Force Reserve. Call 800-257-1212. Air Force Reserve, above and beyond. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guest. We are really pleased today to have Carl Stover, Jr. Carl is the chairman, president, and chief executive officer of C.H. Guernsey and, and Company. They do uh, consulting work, engineering work, and architecture work. Uh, Carl has a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Oklahoma and a master's degree from OU in industrial engineering. Uh, as a matter of fact, while there, he was a distinguished or designated a distinguished graduate from the University of Oklahoma College of Engineering. Uh, he has broad practical experience in the electric uh, utility industry. He's married, uh, three children, three grandchildren. Carl, welcome to the verdict. Thank you, Kent. We're pleasure. really pleased to have you. Thank you. Uh, I want to mention something at the outset about Guernsey. Uh, your website and some of your materials, by the way, happy 75th anniversary Thank to you. Guernsey. We're pleased to, you, to celebrate it this year. <laughs> uh, you talk about your wealth of diversity, and I uh, looked in some of the materials that were available, and I have uh, created a graphic 
that I'd like to have called up now and let's take a look at showing just what kind of work C.H. Guernsey does. Um, I'll just read through these real quickly. Architecture, automated mapping, construction management, economics, energy supply, engineering, environmental, facility management, information technology, master planning, privatization and outsourcing, security consulting, and web services. Uh, thank you for the graphic. Uh, let's uh, focus in on just two or three of those areas, uh, starting out uh, with uh, uh, your international work. The international work is, is uh, relatively new for us. Uh, being a, an Oklahoma-based firm starting in 1928, all of our original work was, was regional work in Oklahoma. Over the years, as we've expanded our different practice areas, one area in which we have developed a great deal of expertise uh, within the United States related to electric utility uh, business. And as you know, the electric utility industry is going through a restructuring. Uh, this has started a number of years ago. Uh, that experience, plus the, the experience we have with rural systems, Mr. Guernsey actually helped found some of the rural electric cooperatives in Oklahoma, and that's really our roots. And we've worked for rural electric systems for since since the, the founding of the Rural Electrification Program in the 40s. So we found that we had a strong base with development of electric utility systems in rural areas. And second, we had a very strong base in the restructuring of the electric utility uh, business. That gave us uh, uh, the experience that we needed then to pursue opportunities internationally with countries like China, uh, India, we've done a lot of work in uh, presenting seminars and workshops because those, those countries, uh, particularly uh, China, was going through the development of electrification in the rural areas today, what we did, hmm. you know, in the 40s. So uh, that provided uh, an opportunity uh, to participate in workshops, teaching, and then some of the uh, other countries, particularly uh, in, in Russia, uh, the work we've uh, uh, we've done in India, they are very interested in the restructuring of the electric utility industry and uh, want to know about the good things we've encountered and the bad things that we've encountered in our process here in the United they States. They don't want our brownouts. Either. They do not. They do not. And uh, uh, so, so that was really our our, our uh, launching point for doing uh, international uh, work. We've worked for uh, utilities uh, in the Philippines. We've worked for the Commission in the Philippines because they were interested in some of our lessons learned working before the Oklahoma Corporation Commission, the Kansas Commission. We, we've worked for a large number of state commissions in the United States as well as the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission on behalf of our clients. So it was a, it was a, they're looking for, for it as an opportunity to transfer knowledge and, and experience. It's a wonderful opportunity for, uh, uh, for us. And I've been involved in a number of the, of the workshops and training programs, and it's, it's just a marvelous opportunity for me personally to see the world. <laughs> <laughs> the engineering and economics aspect, what is that about? The, uh, the, the, the firm started out with Mr. Guernsey as a civil engineer. So we, we were- A one-man show. Uh-huh. And uh, he would start out in Cherokee, Oklahoma, and doing work for local governments, counties, uh, activities, uh, mainly water, uh, road type projects. Uh, then we moved into the electric with the experience that I described to you with the rural electric utilities. So it was engineering civil, engineering uh, electrical. And what we found with our clients is we, we typically work for, for smaller utilities. We are really an extension of their staff. And as they began to encounter more and more issues, such as regulation of utility rates, uh, financial forecasting for, uh, uh, for their, their, uh, their products, uh, we became that, that resource. So I don't know as I'd say that that we created the need or our clients created the need, but together there was a need and, and uh, we 
we play the role as really an extension of our of our client staff so that moved us into the economics area what is the the culture of CGH Guernsey I know you started as a, a basically a one-man show how has it evolved into the current corporate structure well that, that's a good question because it, it, it drives everything we are about uh, uh, right now the the company started with Mr. Guernsey. All the stock was owned by, by Mr. Guernsey. Um, and everybody worked for Mr. <laughs> uh, Guernsey, and he was certainly the, the father figure of the, uh, of the organization. Uh, one thing about Mr. Guernsey that, that uh, has led us to where we, are, where we are today is not only his, uh, his feelings about integrity and the work we do for our clients, but also provide opportunities for individuals to grow within within the firm. So the firm has steadily grown over time. We reached a point in the 80s where uh, uh, we needed to transition because there were really no more Guernseys. There was, there was Kurt, there was Mr. Guernsey, and then Kurt Guernsey. And uh, then we, we transitioned from their having 100% ownership of the firm to a Nissan. So we are a firm that is truly owned by by our staff uh, all of our stock is is held by our by our own employees uh, which in terms of the, of the culture makes it a, a real nice linkage because usually when you talk about uh, organizations you think in terms of the stakeholders of the the client the employees and the stockholders for us the employees and the stockholders are one and the same. So when, when we're trying to create economic value over, over time, we are really creating it for ourselves, our, our own staff. So that's been a, a real strong driver in, in our culture. Another element is this notion that how do we retain good people? And both of you are involved in professional service organizations, and I think you see that one of the keys of keeping really good people is that you've got to give them an opportunity to grow. So that's really been the driver for our diversification. Uh, all these things that Kent mentioned, uh, those are initiatives that at one point in time were started by someone that showed an interest in that area. And the, the firm would lend the support to help that person grow that area. Some have been not so successful, others have been very <laughs> successful. Uh, we try to, to keep our core focus on professional service activities. We are not in manufacturing or real estate or things like that. It, it, we are a professional service firm. So we try to keep our focus on that. Let me jump in here and get us to a break. We're visiting with the president and CEO of C.H. Guernsey and Company, Mr. Carl Stover. You're watching The Verdict, and we'll be right back. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life. American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Bringing out the best in each student. That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities, parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall.
Mick Cornett and Kim Myers back on The Verdict. We're continuing our series of Oklahoma's impact players. This morning, we're talking to the president and CEO of C.H. Guernsey and Company, Carl Stover. Carl, I know you all were, are very much involved with the rebuilding, I'll call it, or the architectural work that went, took place in the Journal Record Building, and that includes the Oklahoma Memorial. How'd you all get involved, and, and what does that consist of? You know, I had mentioned our, our activities related to diversification and how we, we grow areas and we have individuals who take the lead in growing an area. And, and our architectural activity is one of our great success stories. Uh, we originally started our architectural work uh, as support for some of our uh, municipal and electric clients. And over the years, it has steadily grown. Uh, we are uh, one of the largest architectural firms now in the Oklahoma City area. Uh, and our work involves uh, a great deal of work for uh, Department of Defense. We do work for Air Force, military bases. Uh, but one of the areas that was really exciting for us was our work on the memorial. And we had an opportunity uh, to uh, provide services, uh, architectural services, and the development of the memorial. We're very proud of it. And uh, that's, that was certainly one of the high points uh, for us in terms of the professional service offerings that, uh, that we make. Well, those, th that is, has an enormous impact in Oklahoma City, but also worldwide, considering who comes to visit the memorial. It truly does, and I know we have many, many folks that uh, come to visit, and it makes such an emotional impact uh, on them. They had no idea that, uh, th what a quality uh, place it is. Uh, what an inspirational place it can be, and uh, we, we are certainly proud to have a have a part in that. Well, let's let's uh, change the focus just a little bit. I know your headquarters is here in Oklahoma City, but you have offices around the country. Let's take a look at a graphic that uh, shows the uh, U.S. and uh, where your offices are located. Uh, they are located, of course, your headquarters is in Oklahoma City. You have offices uh, in. Uh, Texas, uh, Florida, Illinois, uh, Colorado, Hawaii. Uh, how can Mick and I get assigned to your uh, Honolulu office, <laughs> well, by the way? As soon as I find out how I get assigned, <laughs> then I will pass the word on to you. Uh, well, uh, what size are these uh, satellite offices or regional offices? Uh, they vary. Uh, some of them just consist of uh, uh, two or three people. Others would have Probably the largest that we have right now is around 10 to 15 in the, uh, in the Honolulu uh, office. Uh, that is an office that came about uh, really for two reasons. One is that we were doing a great deal of work for the government and privatization. As you probably know, the government has had a very strong initiative to take the uh, utility uh, assets on Army bases, Navy bases, Air Force bases, and privatize them. And, uh, turn them over to, to private operators. And because of our experience in the electric utility business, in the water business, in the infrastructure business that, that really started with Mr. Guernsey over these uh, 75 years, we were well positioned to go in and offer uh, consulting services, uh, for example, to the Air Force. If they want to say, uh, what would be the, uh, the development of a proposal to privatize the, uh, the uh, assets on an Air Force base. Uh, we do a lot of work for the Navy, a lot of work out of Hawaii, and that's how Honolulu uh, came about. Uh, plus the fact that uh, we had a, a very fine fellow that, uh, that uh, we were working with, and that was his home. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I, I would have to say that uh, in certain instances, the development of our regional offices are a result of either a, a client need, we have a client in the area, or we, we find somebody who is very, very good. We want to get them involved in the organization. Uh, of course, we think Oklahoma City is a wonderful place to be, and, and uh, we, we provide that exposure to them, but sometimes there are reasons they want to stay <laughs> where they are. Well, so. let's look at the building that you have uh, in North Oklahoma City. Um, this is your corporate headquarters for yes. all of those regional offices that we saw, and there it is. And where is that located? It's at 5555 North Grand. It's just directly west of uh, the Integris uh, complex. Well, let me ask you this, Carl. How many employees do you have here in Oklahoma City, just approximately? We, we have a, a total count of about 200 employees, of which 
probably about 160 or so are located uh, in Oklahoma City, and then we have a number that are out on projects. And insofar as, excuse me, insofar as they're being professionals in the sense that they are architects, engineers, economists, uh, uh, you name it, how many uh, professionals do you have on staff? In terms of uh, uh, professional staff, we'd probably have in the range of 80 or 90, uh, either engineers, architects, uh, a lot of MBAs, we have PhDs, uh, economists that are uh, that uh, are part of the firm. So we, mm -hmm. as you've mentioned, we have a very very broad base of professional service talents to uh, to bring to bear on our projects. Tell us about your personal life, Carl. What do you do when you're not at C. H. Guernsey? You're not in that building uh, across from from the Integris Baptist. Uh, I like to sail. It, it's very enjoyable for me to get out on the boat. I've had a boat out there for you know for a number of years. Uh, I like to run and play golf occasionally. And then I also have uh, grandchildren, one of which is in Oklahoma City, and that has been a, a real joy for, uh, uh, for us to, to have uh, Caden uh, in town. <laughs> We've we got about 30 seconds left, and I know you can't talk much about it, but your security work and, and your clients, uh, list of clients is pretty impressive. Uh, if you can just quickly tell it, us briefly, what does Guernsey do with the security? It is. That's another one of our success stories of diversification where we had a young man who felt that provided an opportunity. He took it. He grew the business. Uh, we work for the Smithsonian. We work for uh, NATO. Providing security. Providing security services. And, and typically they are asset protection, uh, designing systems uh, to provide for the security of the asset if it's the Smithsonian or the Is NATO facility. physical security or a software security? It can be a combination mm -hmm. of both. Now we don't offer any, any uh, security people or anything no like that. Guard no armed guards. No, yeah. we are not in that business. What we'll do is go in and do an assessment of uh, security concerns uh, for the uh, for the client, and then uh, uh, develop recommendations, uh, and then if they uh, want to proceed, we will help them in, with regard to the uh, design, and and, uh, and that included the Salt Lake City Olympics. We had the Salt Lake City Olympics, which was one of our of our fun jobs. <laughs> I need to jump in here and, and uh, say goodbye, Carl. We appreciate you coming by. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity Not to. No, there never is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Kent you, and I'll Kent. be back with a few final words. You're watching The Verdict. The Able Law Firm, based in Oklahoma City and recognized nationally for its superior legal ability and very high ethical standards. If you've been injured, or believe someone you love has been a victim and needs to talk to an attorney, call the Able Law Firm. Initial consultations are free. The Able Law Firm. In Oklahoma City, the number is Choose Live license plates are now available for only $25. For more information, visit the website on your screen. And welcome back. We are here to wrap up another edition of The Verdict. Carl Stover uh, gave us a great deal of information about what C.H. Guernsey does both here and abroad. Uh, it is amazing. They have uh, 
They have uh, allowed the client to dictate what kind of firm they have. In other words, if a client has an additional need, rather than just referring them off to somewhere, they go out and acquire that capability and be able to provide as close to full service as one can imagine on architecture, engineering, and other types of consulting services. And uh, thanks uh, uh, to them for keeping their headquarters in Oklahoma City. There are lots of places like Honolulu they could have located it, but they haven't. They've kept it here in Oklahoma City, and uh, it contributes greatly uh, to the well-being of our community. In addition, uh, you see a graphic of, for Da Vinci Network Services. The, uh, that is the fine firm that does the website for the verdict. Uh, Eric and uh, Robert at uh, Da Vinci uh, perform good services. If you get on our website, and uh, take a look at it, you'll see the varying things that we offer, and thanks uh, so much for the outstanding uh, website service that DaVinci gives to us. And we appreciate you going to our website and invite you to go there immediately, because we'd love to hear from you. I'd like to hear what you'd like to see on a future edition of The Verdict, and you can go there by logging on to www.theverdict.tv. Thanks again to our guest, Car Carl Stover of C.H. Guernsey & Company. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. And watching The Verdict with Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. The Verdict is sponsored in part by the Able Law Firm.